Before adjournment. Before adjournment. I'll make that motion. Yeah, and we discussed the personnel issues. I'll second. Mr. Burskus or Mr. Lilliesville? Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, uh, no assigned guests except Mr. Smith here. Welcome. And no public comments. We, we have nothing to do here. Uh, next, we move to approval of the July 10th regular board meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. Mr. Rosenthal. Is there a second? Mr. DeWitt. Uh, any corrections, additions, or uh, things, comments? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Uh, report of our acting executive director. Okay. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report starts on page 12. Uh, since our last meeting in July, I filed uh, seven weekly flag reports with the executive chamber. In my reports, I have informed the second floor of David's last meeting being today and reached out to the appointments office and concerned about our reappointments and our new appointments. And they said they put a rush on it and they will should be hearing something soon, which was a month and a half ago. Um, <clears throat> the Hudson River area office now moved into the new space. And the Black River area has also moved into their new space. Uh, I participated in a local emergency planning committee with uh, Saratoga County, attended the Great Sacandaga Lake Annual Meeting in Edinburgh. And then this past weekend on Saturday, um, as I discussed before, the uh, New York State Naval Militia uh, conducted an exercise in Great Sacandaga Lake. Uh, the, sec the security exercise um, command center was located at SFO. So on hand, we had there about 30 to 35 naval militia, Saratoga, New York State Police dive teams, Fulton County Sheriff's Department, Fulton County Emergency Coordinators, Northville Fire Department, and Channel 6 News. So we had quite a houseful there. The scenario was a boat near the Bachelorville Bridge with two POB. Uh, they were seen tossing something into the lake. The Saratoga County Sheriff's Department apprehended the boat and the people. The New York State, the New York State Police and Saratoga Dive Team, they used a sonar to locate the package. The divers went down and recovered it. And so that was, that was uh, the whole scenario of that. Task. They did some other things too, uh, where they had a, they used a sonar. <coughs> What's that? No, no, no. Okay. no. Uh, the exercise started around eight o'clock and was wrapped up by two. Uh, naval militia and everybody was uh, very grateful for being Where's able to be people on board. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> And I'm going to pass this around. But a week and a half ago, Connie and Pam Sargent stopped by the Second Dog Field Office, and they're the granddaughters of Ed Sargent, the chief engineer that overseen the entire Conklinville Dam project in 1924. Connie and Pam were looking at the pictures that we had hanging in the SFO, looking at some of the old photos and stuff that we had. And I offered them a tour of the dam. So they went up the next day, or gave them a tour of the dam. And included in that is a picture of the two of them standing by the placard that hangs on the dam with Ed Sargent's name on it. We also went down in the basement and found an old document on onion paper. Thank you. That uh, had Ed Sargent's name on it, original signature and stuff. And we, and we gave that to them, too have some uh, memorabilia that was named in. Um, I had Erin, took, she took some pictures, and we're going to include that in our quarterly newsletter with a little briefing on that. Yeah, great note. I think I have a picture of him hanging in my office. <laughs> oh, do you? Well, it's somewhere in the office. <laughs> um, that 
concludes my report, and I would just like to say, uh, David, thank you very much for your service, and it's been a pleasure to serve you. Thank you. And I'd like to Look, I, I don't know if I feel <laughs> Um, I did solicit the town of Webb area for replacements and appointments, and I had six inquiries, and I presented John with three resumes of people that were interested and interested in serving on the board here, so I did try and help a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? <coughs> then we'll move right on to contracts. First one, resolution to authorize additional seismic analyses at Stillwater Dam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in response to recommendations made by our seventh Part 12 independent consultant, uh, who completed an inspection report back in February 2016, um, and in a, a letter dated July 30th, uh, 2018. Uh, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has requested an update of and completion of additional seismic stability analysis uh, for the gravity structures at Stillwater Dam. Uh, it's a follow-up to some of the work that was done back in August of 2010, uh, completed by Paul C. Rizzo Engineering. Um, so we need to uh, procure engineering services uh, to complete the stability analysis for um, earthquake load cases for the earthen embankments, uh, the um, uh, concrete dam, and the spillway itself, and, uh, and also uh, updating completion of uh, liquefaction and deformation analysis for the south embankment. Back in 2010, we completed it for the north embankment. Um, in any event, uh, the staff seeks authorization to solicit engineering services and to request a proposal to complete the seismic stability analysis and the liquefaction and deformation analysis for Stillwater Dam. I have no problem. <laughs> I have my usual question. Certainly. As I defer to your expertise. Okay. I find it somewhat unsettling and unnerving <laughs> that here we are with this federal agency. They ask us to do something, we do. In this case, eight years later, they decide, well, we want you to do more. <coughs> this is like a never-ending saga. Mm -hmm. at, at what point, respectfully, do these things come to an end? I know that's kind of rhetorical, and your yeah. well, well, answer is going to be... We certainly, don't know. And we, yeah, you don't know. And part of it, it, see, it's driven by the fact that we have independent uh, inspections, consultants, perform safety inspections and then report to FERC and their findings and recommendations are the basis for FERC's uh, requirement uh, for completion of certain studies. Yes, so, of course, some of whom, as I recall the history, we had an independent consultant who then became an employee of FERC or something mm -hmm. like that, and they refused to acknowledge the the information and conclusions drawn by the very then I raised this thing back then. I said certainly if wants it, have them come and pay for it. Certainly can happen, yes. Yeah, we did we did. There was some apparently re redundant or repetitive requests that we uh, addressed in that uh, in that fashion. But in this particular case, again it's you know, it's it's part of the investigation the responsibilities of the independent consultant to identify areas that haven't been studied or um, uh, recommend the collection of information on a structure that hasn't been investigated and uh, that recommendation was passed along to FERC uh, back uh, with the seventh part 12 inspection. Um, when you know, in two, that was in 2016 that they uh, made the recommendation. It takes sometimes upwards six months to 12 months for FERC to get through a report and make its recommendations following the um, report. Uh, in this particular case, I... just the thought, frankly, that some of what they are asking us to do mm -hmm. is of a critical mass issue where the dam breaks before we get to do the well, study. I mean, in our case, we, 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 we don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, the structures are, are, are very sound and and not deficient in any way. Um, 
but the, the, it's just the studies based on the requirements for safety that FERC established um, haven't been completed over the years. Um, it's, it's just nature of the beast, unfortunately. Um, Unfortunately for us, now they'll probably require us to do it again. Well, and, and here's a, a side note, too, that um, in this particular case, in August 2010, when, um, well, actually it was 2014 when Rizzo completed the initial analysis, we submitted it to FERC. FERC began the review process, and in the interim, the United States Geologic Society changed the criteria for the load case for seismic studies. Okay. So while our plan study was report was being reviewed, the base criteria changed, the rules of the game. changed forcing part of this additional <laughs> analysis. Because now we have to go back because FERC is looking at it as insufficient because it doesn't meet current standards in terms of the analysis and we have to incorporate part of the responsibility for the consultant will be to incorporate the new uh, load cases that uh, were, became standard between the time we did the first analysis and the time that FERC reviewed the analysis. Well, you so, know, as a board member, our responsibility is to, to exercise guardianship. Absolutely. But we also have some fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And this driving of changes by the federal government costs taxpayers and costs this agency money. At so the end of the day, obviously, I will vote in favor, but I always defer to you and then still scratch my head and when does it end? That's, I just want the record to be clear about my views. Well, well short of the... Um criteria or the, you know, the analysis procedures um, uh, advancing or changing, there is, there is an end to the, the, the series of analysis because you, you have a limited number of structures that are out there and a limited number of, uh, of investigations that you can perform. Well, once you work, once hold, you work through I all of those, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, back there, maybe I should say there should be a limited number of studies. But um, okay. I think, though, you know, given the amount of work we've been doing over the years, we not just at Stillwater, but the other projects, uh, we, we're we're on the the downhill side of that. <laughs> again, of that curve, we're not, that we're, not, we're not, we're not, we're not. I don't believe we're still climbing up the, the hill. So. And, and obviously, you know the spirit in which yes. I ask you. Absolutely, I, I just don't get it sometimes. You know. Okay, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, let's move that out. We need a resolution to authorize additional seismic analysis of Stillwater Dam. Do we need a resolution, or just to give them a nod? Need, no, a, resolution. need a resolution. Okay. That's fine. I'll make a motion. I'll second. second. Mr. Burr, discussion? Mr. discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, can I jump out of um, um, the order for a moment, if I don't mind? We have somebody who came in with <coughs> and requested to uh, address the board. And so we will go back to uh, uh, public comment. And uh, let me introduce Ms. Karen Mills. Karen, you can stand right at the edge of the table there. Thank yeah. you. That'd be perfect. Thank you. I have a little diagram so you will know what I'm talking about, or you want to. I don't know that I have yeah, enough. Please. I didn't know how many people would be here. So um, it's concerning about a neighbor who's abusing his privilege. And excuse my notes so I don't go off on a tangent. That's why I still like And the sheriff and the state police are well aware of it, but they don't deal with anything beyond those yellow stakes, as you probably well know. John's aware of it. Um, but we need it officially on the record, and I'm here to officially request that basically. Is this yes. a great second on the record? It is. I'm sorry. It okay. is, yes. And I'm Mills, and that's the outlined okay. one. And this is concerning Perlazzo, the 10 foot one to the one side of my larger uh, okay, permit area. Okay. Oh, um, okay. There's been an ongoing problem prior to me, and I've only owned the property since this spring. So in three months, I've been up there, and, and a lot has happened. But, um, his access, the question is where is his access to that permit? He doesn't have
county property immediately abutting it, like I do. So where was the original access to that? And I'm working on that, John. With John, we're going to do some digging in the archives to find out, maybe reset it. But in the meantime, we want to move what he thinks is his access. He has a footpath directly along my property line, right? So here's my camp. There's the property line. And he thinks his footpath is right next to that. Mm -hmm. and there's a couple of issues with that. The main one being that that's my living room. That's my camp and my area, our picnic table, our fire pit, or even if we're on our property, not on the, the current property, but it's right there. So it's like a stranger walking through your living room, which, mm -hmm. you know, is inconvenient, but um, there's a, uh, so we requested that he move, and John has suggested another spot, we suggested another spot, because John told me that he thought I was within my rights to ask that the footpath be moved, where he crosses my, uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. the permit area that I bought, I know I don't think. Um, and so John has, uh, we showed him what would be more convenient, further away, so that we can just enjoy the peace and quiet of our campsite. So he did tell him, he spoke to Mr. Falazzo at one time, um, at his door, I believe, showed him that we would like him to cross further down, um, and if he would voluntarily do that. And at one point he said, no problem, Falazzo. Um, he's not the most stable human being, so he changes and forgets what he said, I guess. Um, so I know it sounds like I'm like crying and whining like this is my private area, but um, there's the issue of our dog. That's a good spot to tie our dog with the tree on the property, but the dog would be able to go around the tree and then be in the area that they need to cross. So it's a, little, a, a bit of a complication, but there's a whole lot more. Um, his behavior has been erratic is the polite way to say it. John can attest to the verbal abuse that he's uh, suffered himself from this man on the telephone, but Falazzo has gone way beyond the verbal abuse with us. And again, I remind you, we've been there since June, on weekends. I don't even live there full time. First, he verbally threatened us, told us that we would return and be armed. When we said, please cross down there, please don't cross up here. Next, he crossed again in the same spot, the original displayed a knife in a, as non-threatening a manner as you can with a knife, but he just wanted us to see that he had a knife with him and then walked down to the beach. But the icing on the cake, Labor Day weekend, he approached us Friday night to cross there. Our dog was barking. We looked around the trailer. We said, John, or I'm sorry, John, we said, David, you need to go down there where John put the stakes, go down there. He pointed a gun, point blank, at my fiance's face like this close and said, no one's going to tell me where I can cross to my beach. Is this Fulton or Sheriff of Fulton County? That was Fulton County. Uh -huh. So now the sheriff is handling that. <laughs> There's gun charges and he goes to court on the 6th of October. <coughs> you know what those charges are? Menacing? The menacing, yeah. I have the, the report. I brought some copies if you want the police report. Okay. It does say menacing because it turns out it's a flare gun. Doesn't matter. Doesn't right. matter to me. <laughs> and I guarantee it wouldn't matter if he pointed it at the sheriff. Mm -hmm. If he did. So that was like the ice around the cake. I'm not being petty. I don't want this crazy man, excuse me, but near my family. So we requested the neighbors have cleared. John asked us to make it a little clearer the spot. He's put yellow stakes. He's pointed to So I'm requesting that it be made official. The, the access that he uses currently, is that in fact in your deeded property? It has nothing to do with my property. It's on the permit <coughs> property. It's not on my property. It's on the permit property. And we don't know what originally his permit was issued with, where the access was. I'm There's confused. lots of stories in the neighborhood. I'm confused. Is he the person that owns property with considered a back lot? Correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 So he has access somehow to a 10 foot permit. Somehow, somewhere. And, and we're not sure where that is. And the current path that he uses, is that through someone's private property? It is not. But what is that strip? It is part of my permit. It's her, it's he, he comes down, <coughs> let me show you that. Yeah, I don't understand how he gets to his permit through people's private property. It's not it's private property. property. It's crossing my permit area to get to his permit area. Okay. Then he comes right across here, which is from the 
Oh, it, it, is this the area of the living room? No, I think it's yeah, right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 I don't know if it's 1017. Okay, so it comes down the old road and crosses in front of your lot. Yeah, right here. Yes. But right. then, then so he is on the street when he's crossing. He's not trespassing. Yeah, he is crossing there, and we've just asked that he go a little further and he gave a shot to give him. Sure, this ten foot strip that says Verlazo on it is well. That's his beach permit. Yes, okay. that's the state land. All of those with the names are the permits. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely his that's permit that he recently renewed. Was, was close to last year. Yeah. 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 So this is his ten foot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I know that you know. All these permits. <laughs> I just know that if somebody does what clearly delineates delineated in your rules, like cutting a tree without a permit. They get a letter and it's a warning, and in that letter, I believe you say you have the right to revoke the permit. Mm -hmm. Now, the things that he's doing aren't clearly delineated, so I can't. There isn't like rule number four that he broke, but he is crossing where he we don't want him to cross, where he's not supposed to. If you make it official that his foot path is down there and he continues to use the upper one, um, then I, in my mind, it's kind of unauthorized use of a permit area that doesn't belong to him. So well, I, I happen to own property, and I am a back lot, mm -hmm. so I'm extraordinarily sensitive okay. to your concern. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, I'm also a lawyer, or a retired lawyer, and I will tell you that the issue for the district would be to find if he had the deed right away of an easement through there, then he has the right to go, and once he's on the state land, can we prohibit him from... We have created established footpaths for people to walk. Okay. We can it's prescribe the, right the location place. of the footpath. Okay. That's we awesome. do not enforce the adherence to those right. footpaths. So we can tell you that the footpath should be 30 feet further down mm -hmm. onto the state land and then traverse at that point. What's our remedy if he doesn't comply with our established... <coughs> You're not recording this, are you, ma'am? No. <laughs> We're just recording her talking. <laughs> we have a public... I would prefer that that... I have no objection to what I'm saying being on a public record. I asked record. her before I recorded Karen talking. But I also have a... She's a neighbor that Right away, where David is walking down my path to go across her property, and David's not on it. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen his deed, so I don't know. That's part of it. But, um, I just, like you said, what is, what, what is the remedy? Is he, can you enforce that he that's, that's the only deal? question I have. What, what can we do if he doesn't comply, comply with what we designate as a footpath? It's a local law enforcement issue at that point. And they refuse because it's state property. There's also other committees that use this footpath, right? No, that's no. just his. Well, the gate shaft is written down. That's there. It's like a road. And then, so he walks down gate shaft, and then that's where we want him to. And then he crosses. So, no, it's only a footpath for his access to his 10 foot permit. And I, and I suspect, and some of the neighbors agree that. Probably wasn't was originally issued. He probably had a right away through mm -hmm. private property and had a fight with that neighbor. And so, since no one's been on my property for 20 years, no one's owned it. Or, well, they owned it, but they didn't ever use it. So he took the liberty of just doing that, and, mm -hmm. and that's become where he's walked. And that's his argument is that I've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. and I'm not no, I didn't think so. So, I mean, is it true that anybody can cross the state land? Anybody could just walk on it. From a public access or bring a boat up on the beach? Is that, pop, is that true? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is it true that anybody, you know, any, it's, it's public property because it's, a, it's state land? Yes. 
So the permit allows me to use it, but doesn't forbid other people from using it. They can't come onto your permit area. It's exclusive use. There you go. The exclusive so use. Permit area. But you're yeah. going to designate a footpath. Yeah. So if he's outside of that designated footpath, is he not then breaking some kind of rule as far as being on my permit area? <coughs> So yes, ma'am, I understand. <laughs> I understand. And this kind of a discussion, I am totally willing to have with you after the meeting. Okay, great. I'm not going to sit there and yeah. run through a number of hypotheticals yeah. with you. I will answer your question, but I don't expect you to come back with the next iteration. No. Okay? okay? No, I understand. I'm just trying to find the out where we stand. permit system provides exclusive use to the permit holder. Okay. In order that we comply with the wishes of the APA and the DEC and uh, the wishes of the constituency that we serve as the regulating district, we interpret the exclusive use to mean that you have a use of a particular piece of state land to the exclusion of others where you have added some accoutrement to that land like a dock or a fire pit or a flagpole that you can exclude others from using your fire pit running a flag up your flagpole or docking a boat at your dock. It is state land. Mm -hmm. So if somebody accesses that state land from a public access point, mm -hmm. they can set up shop and sit there. The expectation is that if your permit area is so designated, your dock is out in front of it, your boat is at the dock, your family is congregating at the fire pit, that somebody is not likely to come up on a kayak and beach their kayak and have a picnic. Mm -hmm. If they do, it is a local law enforcement issue. It is not something that the regulating district is going to or could enforce. If your local law enforcement sees it as not a trespass, because it is a citizen of New York State who is traversing a navigable waterway to get to state land and choose for whatever reason to open their Subway sandwich at that, mm -hmm. that location and eat. That's not our issue. Okay. We can't do anything about that. We really know law enforcement. Right. Okay. We can move the access point mm -hmm. we can move the location of the footpath mm -hmm. where somebody is is uh, inconvenienced mm -hmm. by the location that it is in now um, and the expectation would be that that person whose footpath was moved would use the new footpath rather than the old footpath if this guy is pulling a gun, John staking out something saying go 30 feet further down, it probably isn't going to change his behavior. Those are local law enforcement issues, which apparently you've already taken up with the, the Fulton County Sheriff or the, the DEC, uh, DCOs or the state police. That will wind its way through the court. To the extent that you get a restraining order against the guy, he can't come within X number of feet, you can take that up with the local judge. Um, what is your town kind of brought up in town of Mayfield? Brought up. I don't really know how better so to answer your question. Doing anything, he's not breaking any regulatory district rules by not following the footpath. It's only suggested. It is, but it, it's not necessarily something that 
would rise to the level of a revocation of the permit. Okay. Similarly, you know, grandma and grandpa, their two kids and their eight grandchildren come come across the footpath and everybody's happy and one of the grandchildren loves the dog and runs off the footpath, mm-hmm. you're not going to revoke grandpa's permit because not everybody is adhering. Mm-hmm. It, you know, the okay. egregiousness of the offense is something that the board would need to take into effect or into consideration when they decide whether or not it's going to take action against that permittee. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry. even even with that, you have to recognize that if it's a public street mm-hmm. that goes down to the public lands, or if there's an easement that that guy has across a piece of private property that goes to the public lands, or if he gets in a canoe or a kayak and comes around from the public lands mm-hmm. onto there, we don't have a SWAT team. We're, we don't have an enforcement arm. He's actually not breaking any law. That's not for us to decide. Okay. That, that's the... Beyond your, your right. We should keep emphasizing it, but it is not to say we are not sensitive no, and concerned sure. about this. Certainly we're sympathetic. We're not dismissive in any yeah. manner. No, no. We've, we've addressed and we these kinds of issues no. before. On this old right. footpath, the one that night is using now. Can, I know people can't put up a structure on the state land, but can we put up like a snow fence or a little impediment to keep him from using that path with the permission of the people? Well, This is precisely the reason that this is not the right forum yeah. to have this conversation. Uh, we can have this after. I'll get your contact after the meeting. Absolutely. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any comments? Uh, thank you. And, and just a comment that I, I, I thank Mr. Leslie as always. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yep, uh, this is now the the third uh, solicitation of bids for our roof at Mayfield office. Uh, the memo that I provided provides a summary of the bid process, the evaluation of the, of the bids that were received. We had three firms that requested and received a copy of the invitation for bid uh, document uh, and who also participated in the mandatory uh, pre-bid site visit. Three bids were received and opened on August 24th. Um, we 
they have received a bid from General Roofing, General Roofing Contractors LLC for $81,260.50, from SNL Roofing and Sheet Metal for $95,718, and, and Titan Roofing for $89,951.40. We've reviewed the bids uh, and have identified general roofing contractors as the lowest bidder. Uh, we've re reviewed their um, evidence of experience in the field of roofing, construction, uh, and feel that they have the uh, experience necessary to responsibly and reliably complete the work. Uh, so district staff recommends conditionally awarding the work to general roofing contractors, LLC, seeks board's acceptance of the recommendation and authorization to form a contract to complete the work and authorization for the interim executive director to execute an agreement in the amount of $81,260.50. I'll be happy to take any questions. Yeah. <laughs> we underestimated our own $25,000. I'm sorry? Resident yes, we came up at 57,400. It was that was a slight update from our previous estimate um, that we had uh, in the last bid go around. And we had recall the last bid for the same asphalt roof. The last low bidder was McLean B Construction back in uh, July 2017. And that was for $57,576.50. They never followed through, though, right? And they right. never followed through. So that's through. why we're in the predicament. And that's why we're in the predicament of having to rebid that's the right. project. Yeah. So, um, When would they start this project? We are hopeful that we can get it started this year. Uh, it's you know about a four-week process or maybe upwards of six weeks. By the time we get the contract signed, all the documents in place, get the signatures, send it out to the Attorney General's office, send it out to the uh, Office of State Comptroller, and then get the contract signed back and to the contractor. It can be upwards of six weeks. So we hope to be able to, but um, you know, we might not be able to. It depends, on, so it depends partially, too, on the weather. We've submitted so. this contract before, so in terms of there being any issues with what we submit, any back and forth with AG or OSC should be not an issue. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. So the sooner we get your permission, the sooner they get started. <laughs> we, will, we will be working on getting a signed contract uh, first thing tomorrow. Yeah. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? Question votes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any opposed? Uh, staff and committee reports. Uh, governance committee. Chairman Rosenthal. Mr. Chair, um, everyone on this board was present during those discussions. I suppose I was going to leave it at that. There are no policy changes. And there are issues with regard to, I won't even begin to iterate the B numbers and the D numbers and <laughs> the open bulletins, but we're in compliance and we'll, and we'll do what we will necessary to keep in compliance. That's it. Uh, the Marchion McDonald bill has yet to be delivered to the governor as of yesterday. Um, permitting for Hawkinsville will commence once the comptroller returns the Kleinschmidt contract and Kleinschmidt gives us a plan. Uh, other than that, I spent most of the summer offering uh, the acting executive director and board chair advice and counsel on personnel issues. If anybody has any questions, I'll... Any questions? Any comments? Questions, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, compliance officer. Thank you. 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 Um, program, we receive an A plus for all things that 
questions or comments from anybody? No, thank you very much. Uh, Chief Fiscal Officer, Mr. Farrar. Mr. Chairman, my report can be found on pages 23 to 65. As always, I will focus on my summary report on page 23. Uh, the district's independent auditors uh, completed their field work last month. Uh, they've asked several questions since uh, they've gone back to New York to do the remainder of uh, their audit work. And at this point, we continue to shoot for uh, the end of the month, September 30th. Pursuant to the public authority rules, required date to have that independent audit back to us. Um, I won't really have a solid sense for that until I get the draft audit, which I would expect to see in the next week or so. Okay. In, um, monthly reporting forecast uh, cash flow reports are contained uh, in my uh, my report for this month. Uh, the federal and state assessments for 1819. Thus far, we've received the Washington for the Hudson River Area County assessments. We received the Washington uh, assessment for 138,220, and on the federal headwater side, we received Brookfield's renewable power uh, assessment for 365,100. On the Black River side, we received a single hydro, well, several smaller hydro assessments totaling 42,000. Under uh, New York State Administration, as I indicated earlier, there's several of the biggest public authority reports due, that being the uh, data request for chairman investment, uh, annual report, and the certified independent audit, which will all be due uh, for electronic posting on 9-30-2018. A um, new network uh, firewall was deployed this last week at Albany, Mayfield, and Watertown. Uh, that new deployment has enabled the district to upgrade uh, the bandwidth for the network speed to 100 megabits per second. We've been on a time, old Time Warner contract where we were getting at maximum 30 at Albany and uh, 15, I think, at, Water, at uh, Mayfield. So this is going to dramatically improve the network workflow of information across all three sites. The only site that is not set up, and they're looking at that today as we speak, would be Hadley. And on the Hadley spoke of this virtual private network that we have, uh, only uh, allows only. It's an important thing. That gets us the camera feed back to the other side. So I expect to see that hopefully completed by the end of the week. Uh, last thing I want to mention is that on in October, we got a, an email from Bank of America indicating that there was a uh, fraudulent check passed at a Bank of America. Uh, in October? In, I'm sorry, in August. In August. Uh, that they passed it. We believe it was in Virginia. The check was for 7480 bucks. We don't have a lot of information because when, they, when a bank fraud um, incident occurs, uh, bank of America, who is who is our bank? Obviously, everybody is kind of a suspect in this, so they're not. They don't give you a lot of information. So all we know at this point is that a check that we have seen the front of the check, a facsimile of the front, was made out to an Owen J. Young. Uh, that person signed the check. We don't know if it was dropped for deposit. We don't know if they were at the tellers, but through the uh, whatever the hold on the check period, that the that little audit that Bank of America does, they fill up something, they didn't tell us exactly what, that they found unusual and refused payment on the check, they immediately reported that to us. That investigation that then ensues is between Bank of America and the New York State Office of the State Controller's Cash Management Unit. We are not involved at all. Um, so I, we're not being penalized either. No, no. The check was not cash, so we didn't lose any money. Um, the check looked a lot like a petty cash check. It was interesting, but the account number on it was our general fund account. So it, it just raises so many questions in my mind as to how anybody would get the number. You know, how did they figure out the facsimile? Was it a, a vendor that received the check? So we don't know. They're, they're, they'll do a, an investigation. And at the point the investigation is completed, I believe we'll get something 
turn, the officers take control are indicating if we have to take any additional measures beyond what the bank instructed us to do, which is to electronically list every single check that we cut since that was discovered has to be posted on Bank of America's website. It's a secured website, so they have instant access to every check while they're going through their investigation. They can see if there's any other unusual activity uh, concerning checks that are passed you know, through their banking system. Beyond that, I have reached out one time and they said, when it's done, you will know. So they're, not, they're not sharing anything with us other than the fact that somebody tried to pass their check. The story, we were a pickle distributor. Somebody, a $30,000 check to buy a car, one of our cars, same thing, fraudulent check. Right. And they caught the guy because two weeks later he came back trying to buy floor mats and gave him another check. <laughs> well, there you go. So, so I don't know. Really be the brightest people. Well, this is the first time this has ever happened since yeah. I've been here. I don't believe there's ever been an incident that anybody before me has probably ever come across. So, yeah, so somebody took over. Yeah, it's the first person. Of course, with a growth of the internet, it's becoming easier and easier. Well, every time you send a check out, it's got yeah. you know, routing number and account number. Right, right. I mean, the, the information is accessible because right. people and other yeah. vendors that we submit checks to see those numbers. But. Um, I'll be interested to see what their findings are. And that completes my report. Unless the board has any other questions. Any questions for uh, Mark? Yeah. Thank you. As always, thank you. Uh, Chief Engineer. Okay, Mr. Chairman. The dry weather that we experienced during the first two thirds of the summer continued in August. Uh, we had average 70% uh, of historic average tree sip in the Hudson River area. Indian Lake and Mayfield and Conklo um, and in the Black River area at Stillwater we had about 50% of historic average and about 80% of historic average precip in the Fulton Chain of Lake. Um, the uh, precip on Sacandaga resulted in an inflow of about 65% of historic average significantly low and uh, in the Black River area uh, where we've seen the most uh, dramatic effect from the lack of precipitation. We had about 12% of historic average inflow to the Stillwater Reservoir. Despite that, uh, Great Sacandaga, Indian Lake, and certainly the Fulton Chain, they're all at or above historic average. In fact, uh, Great Sacandaga Lake is about a foot above historic average. Indian Lake is about 1.1 feet above. Um, still water is the only one that's been most severely affected uh, as we've been continuing a release of about 300 CFS through most, uh, not all the summer, um, with the exception of a few days when we actually increased the release uh, and in order to maintain the minimum flows in Watertown of about 1,000 CFS and to maintain the uh, minimum flows necessary for um, in, in environmental uh, concerns in the Beaver River. And uh, so Stillwater Reservoir is about 3.4 feet below historic average. But uh, things are starting to improve slightly even at uh, Stillwater in terms of elevation. Uh, other than that, uh, operations are normal at all our facilities. Other than that, other than that. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take any questions. Any questions or comments? All, all the wastewater treatment plants now are being required to do a disinfection. Is that going to affect any, any of your calculus? Uh, no, it shouldn't have a, an effect. The, the minimum flows, for example, at Great Sacandaga Lake, um, the minimum below confluence, below the Hudson Sacandaga River confluence flow. Um, is based on that 1,700 and, okay. and 60 CFS, uh, which we always maintain, which is the, the, the minimum. Right. It's, it's tied to that um, uh, issue that you've mentioned, but uh, but it won't uh, it won't vary because of those demands or That's issues true. downstream. We're making us spend a fortune. Yeah, that. This is the Any other questions? Any other questions or comments? Again, thank you very much. Uh, Hudson and Black River Administrator, Mr. Hodges.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report starts on page 100. Uh, we now have two new team members, Mike Chase, our maintenance specialist, and Thomas Baker, our engineering assistant, which have both, in their short time, time with us, have shown to be a great asset for the district. The work boat has been pulled for the winter. As I mentioned before, we had an issue with the apprentice loader this spring, and by the time we got it repaired, the boat had to come out of the water. So <laughs> needless to say, we didn't get a chance to do any riprap this year via boat. Uh, but we're ready to go for next year. Okay. And uh, our riprap season by land will be starting shortly, uh, probably within a couple of weeks. We'll be doing our best uh, with our equipment that we have and doing erosion control. I assisted uh, Black River Field Office staff one day with the installation of a new camera at Old Forge. And thanks to the engineering department, we now have cameras at all our dams except for Hawkins Hill. So. The uh, Black River Field Office crew has uh, been busy, again, with uh, final touch-ups touch of uh, landscaping around the new garage, which come out real nice, uh, painting the floors in the control houses, and a uh, little housekeeping, and they've been real busy with all the camera installations. And I also attended a perk inspection at the Stillwater Dam. That concludes my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions anybody may have. Any questions and comments? Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, board members, questions and comments? I have a couple. I did. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, well, the, per the, the first comment I have is just a reminder that the board had a past resolution directly uh, making sure particularly with regard to contracts and legal issues that they in fact are reviewed by our council to ensure compliance not just with the requirements established by DOB or the controller but you know our, our placement funds for his consideration to make sure that they are Neat and tidy and meet legal requirements in general. And, like sure. you said, and not only that, also has to be signed off by the executive director. And also, if there's money involved, uh, the controller. So, so that everybody's on the same page. We had just a check mark that I looked at it before the board seated. We had a discussion at our senior staff this week, and that all uh, contracts, resolutions, will be viewed by the entire senior staff. And, and I think the way we should do it, I don't know how everybody else feels, is when we see it in the midst of a, a cover sheet with, our, with, yeah. with, with, with three boxes and mm -hmm. you check it off and so on. If you have an objection to it, you can bring it up at the meeting. It's just that you review so, you, so, you, so that nobody's surprised when we get to it. Exactly. And that's what we do. It is being yeah, taken so care of. I don't think there's anything we have to have to vote at this point. Right. right. No, no, thank you, Chair, because you added exactly to our prior discussion. The second thing, and I spoke with the Chair and uh, our Executive Director, and really it arises because I'm one of those visual people who stands and listens and sees people cutting stuff down or moving stuff around. Uh, so I suggested, and, and Mr. Hasse right now thinks it's a great suggestion or a good suggestion, when someone applies for a permit, we are going to create on the agency's website some work listing. Work permit. Oh, what did I say? Permit. Oh, yeah, a work permit, not a permit for your dot, but a work permit. So it will say, respectfully, Smith, permit number such and such, address such and such, open per permit date issued to do inquiry description such and such, closed on such and such. That will enable a number of things, the most important of which people like me who are vigilant about the potential. We've had some other cases, obviously, we've been before the board, revoking permits, <coughs> dredging, and egregious conduct. The public will know right away or have the ability to know right away. So 
so and so has a permit to do such and such, and it was closed on such and such. Our council is looking cross eyed at me, so I better let him speak about that. We will ensure that any information put on the website complies with the personal privacy protection. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It may not be name, name, permit. Probably not an address. Okay. okay. I appreciate that. This, this arises because it's happened on two occasions in my area. Always. On both occasions. 4.30 on Friday. Where I will see someone what I consider clear cutting and I get all agitated about it and then John tells me no they had a permit and I came staff looked and they did comply albeit it looked like they just cleared out the field or across where a lot of boats like to park all of a sudden I hear chainsaws and I, the next thing I see is a fire pit. so I'm wondering how is that happening same thing inspection is done following the weekend and it's it's just, you know, there are people besides me that want to protect the lake and are vigilant about protecting the lake, and it's a manner of communication. And the second thing is, I wanted to commend Mr. Colpan, notwithstanding all of the lack of rain. Well, and, and, and this is my second thought. We have a newsletter. I read this by John and Rob. I don't know how you do it, but sometimes, I know you've done this in the past, some kind of a short story to tell the public how and why the lake levels are as they are. And you may read those blogs where people complain, we had rain up and up for four days, how come the lake is lower than I want it to be? And you get positive responses that remind people it's a reservoir, it's not a lake. But maybe something in the newsletter to, to inform the public. Just to report, 65% of inflow. Right. You know, 13% of inflow up north. You know, I don't understand that. David Swain over there on addressing that. And usually it's picked up by the Great Second Lake Association. I think the problem with both of those is it's a limited number of people that it goes to. I've certainly heard an awful lot of why it is this way, but uh, you know, we need a, a way to get it out to more of the permit holders than what each of these groups has on their, on their list. Thank you. And in that spirit, Mr. Smith, that's exactly where I thought of an idea. Use our own website. Any way to get information out is helpful. You know, and I don't know if it's helpful. One time I talked to the editor of Leader Carroll willing to run a multi column oh. on uh, stuff going on around the lake. Uh, the other way it can be addressed also is that every year when we send out the renewals, a cover letter goes out with some informational uh, stuff on that. We can include that in there because then I know every permit holder has received it. Mm -hmm. yeah, perfect. Yeah, the more information you give people, the better. Mm -hmm. And with that, Mr. Chair, I apologize for being so wordy today. I have a lot of questions and comments, and I'm done. <laughs> I have the, as usual, <laughs> more than usual, I have the unhappy duty <laughs> of, um, I have David's um, letter of, um, well, his term is done under his letter of uh, resignation from the board. And I suppose that we should accept it with regret. Close the Thank you for his service. Can we vote no? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd like a motion to uh, accept his resignation with regret. That's effective. Close the business. Effective. There's uh, a couple hours after closing business. No, close the business. Close, close the business, business today. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So that we second. can get him home. Is there a second to that? Uh, you mean, we mean. <laughs> well, Mr. Leslie raised a good question. If we, if we don't, if we, maybe he can't go home, so. <laughs> but he can't leave. Right. 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 <laughs> I'd like a motion to accept with regret. With 
great respect. Who went, who went to executive session? Who? Rosenthal Bergstresser to discuss personnel matters? Personnel matters. And what time is it? Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion.